That's a closed runway. That'll work, sir. We're getting the equipment off the runway and... Look up at the sky next time you hear a jet passing overhead. What do you see? Two engines. Always two engines. But if you had done this same thing 40 years ago, you might have spotted something completely different. Aircraft with three engines. These were called trijets, and they once dominated the skies, carrying millions of passengers across oceans and continents. The McDonnell Douglas DC-10, the Lockheed L-1011 TriStar, even Boeing 727. These three-engine giants were the workhorses of aviation for decades. But today, they virtually vanished from passenger service. So what happened? How did an entire category of aircraft, one that represented some of the most advanced engineering of its time, simply disappear? The answer reveals one of aviation's most fascinating stories of innovation, regulation, and the relentless march of technology. To understand why trijets existed, we need to go back to 1953, when the Federal Aviation Administration established what became known as the 60-minute rule. This regulation was simple but powerful. Twin-engine aircraft could not fly more than 60 minutes away from a suitable airport. If an engine failed, pilots had to reach an emergency landing site within that window. This rule made perfect sense at the time. Early jet engines were nowhere near as reliable as today's power plants. Engine failures happened regularly. And flying over oceans or remote areas with just one remaining engine was considered too risky. But here's where it gets interesting. In 1964, the FAA granted three-engine aircraft an exemption from the 60-minute rule. Suddenly, trijets could access profitable long-haul and over-water routes that remained completely off-limits to their twin-engine competitors. This regulatory sweet spot created a massive market opportunity. Airlines needed aircraft that could fly international routes safely and efficiently but didn't want the fuel-hungry four-engine alternatives like the Boeing 707 or Douglas DC-8. The trijet seemed like the perfect compromise. Safer than twins, more efficient than four-engine aircraft, and regulatory approved for the routes that mattered most. The trijet's initial success wasn't just clever engineering. It was regulatory genius. The late 1960s and 1970s became the golden age of trijet development. McDonnell Douglas launched the DC-10 in 1970, while Lockheed countered with the L-1011 TriStar in 1972. Boeing had already found success with their smaller 727, which became one of the most produced airliners in history. These weren't just aircraft, they were technological marvels. The DC-10 could carry over 380 passengers across 6,000 miles. The L-1011 featured some of the most advanced avionics of its era. Both represented the cutting edge of aerospace engineering. Airlines loved them. Pan Am, TWA, American Airlines, the biggest names in aviation, built their long-haul fleets around these three-engine workhorses. By the early 1980s, hundreds of trijets crisscrossed the globe daily. The fuel crises of 1973 and 1979 actually helped trijets. When fuel prices tripled, airlines desperately needed alternatives to gas-guzzling four-engine jets. Trijets offered a middle ground, better fuel economy than quads, but still capable of intercontinental range. For nearly two decades, it seemed like the three-engine configuration had found its permanent place in aviation. If there's one acronym that sealed the fate of the trijet, it's this, E-T-O-P-S. But here's what airlines discovered that changed everything about how we think about aviation safety. Extended range twin engine operations performance standards. ETOPS represented a fundamental shift in how aviation regulators thought about engine reliability and aircraft safety. The breakthrough came in 1985 when Transworld Airlines received the first ETOPS 120 approval for their Boeing 767 operations from Boston to Paris. This single route approval opened the floodgates. Within months, American Airlines was flying 767s from Dallas to London, 
and United was operating twin-engine flights across the Pacific. For the first time, twin-engine aircraft could access the most profitable international routes. Routes like New York to London, Los Angeles to Tokyo, and Chicago to Frankfurt, the bread and butter of trijet operations, suddenly faced twin-engine competition. By 1988, ETOPS 180 became reality, allowing twins to fly up to 180 minutes from alternate airports. Routes that had been trijet exclusive for decades suddenly opened up to more efficient twin-engine competitors. The technological foundation for this shift had been building since the 1970s. Jet engines were becoming dramatically more reliable, with in-flight shutdown rates improving from 1 in 2,000 hours to better than 1 in 20,000 hours for ETOPS 120 certification. The gradual introduction of Full Authority Digital Engine Control FA -E systems, which began in military applications in the early 1980s and spread to commercial aviation through the late 1980s and 1990s, provided computerized monitoring that made engines safer and more predictable than ever before. Modern turbofan engines weren't just more reliable than their predecessors, they were exponentially more powerful. The latest GE90-115B produces 115,000 pounds of thrust, nearly matching the combined output of all three engines on a DC-10-30 which together generated around 120,000 pounds of thrust. But here's the part that will surprise you. The third engine that made Trijet special also made them vulnerable in ways engineers never anticipated. Unlike the two wing-mounted engines, the third engine had to be integrated into the aircraft's fuselage. This created unique design problems that didn't exist on twin-engine aircraft but it also revealed a crucial safety advantage that airlines were about to give up. When a twin-engine aircraft loses an engine, it faces what pilots call the critical engine scenario. The remaining engine creates asymmetric thrust that can be difficult to control, especially during takeoff. Trijets, with their center-mounted third engine, maintained better balance with any single-engine failure. Yet, despite this safety advantage, the engineering challenges proved decisive. On the DC-10, the third engine mounted directly to the vertical stabilizer. On the L-1011, it was buried deep in the fuselage, connected by an S-shaped duct. Both solutions added weight, complexity and maintenance headaches. Three engines meant three times the maintenance requirements. Airlines had to stock more spare parts, train more technicians, and schedule more downtime. Every additional engine position required potentially different components, multiplying inventory costs. Pilot training became more complex too. Three-engine aircraft required specialized procedures for engine-out situations, asymmetric thrust management, and emergency protocols that didn't apply to simpler twin-engine designs. As the trijet fleet aged, these operational challenges became more pronounced. Parts became expensive and harder to source as fewer aircraft remained in service. Airlines found themselves trapped in a negative spiral. Declining fleet sizes made trijets more expensive to operate, which accelerated their retirement. While engineers struggled with trijet complexity, airline accountants were discovering an uncomfortable truth. Three engines cost about 50% more to operate than two. The math was simple, but brutal. More engines meant more fuel consumption, more maintenance, more training, more everything. When twin-engine alternatives could finally access the same routes, the economic case for trijets collapsed overnight. Airline deregulation in 1978 intensified these pressures. In the regulated era, Airlines could pass costs on to passengers through fixed pricing. After deregulation, every inefficiency became a competitive disadvantage. The emergence of low-cost carriers made things worse. These airlines prioritized operational efficiency above all else. They had no interest in maintaining complex three-engine fleets when simpler twins could do the job. Route structures were changing too. The hub-and-spoke networks that developed after deregulation favoured aircraft that could efficiently serve diverse routes. Twins offered the operational flexibility that airlines increasingly demanded. By the 1990s, 
the Boeing 777 and Airbus A330 families were delivering the same range and payload as trijets, but with the operating economics of twin-engine aircraft. The competitive gap became insurmountable. Environmental regulations added another layer of pressure on trijets. Federal Aviation Regulation Part 36, established in 1969, set increasingly strict noise limits for aircraft. The three-engine configuration, particularly the tail-mounted engines, created acoustic challenges that were expensive to solve. The third engine's position made it harder to shield noise from surrounding communities. As airports became more sensitive to noise complaints, these limitations translated into operational restrictions. Some airports limited trijet operations to specific hours or runways, reducing their commercial viability. Fuel efficiency became an environmental issue too. In an era of growing climate consciousness, operating three engines instead of two became harder to justify. Airlines faced pressure from both cost considerations and environmental responsibility. Modern twin-engine aircraft weren't just more efficient, they were dramatically cleaner per passenger mile. The sustainability argument reinforced the economic case against trijets. The last decade of trijet operations tells a story of managed decline. Airlines began retiring their three-engine fleets systematically, replacing them with more efficient twins. Northwest Airlines operated some of the last DC-10s in passenger service, retiring their final aircraft in 2007. Delta's L-1011s followed shortly after. Today, passenger trijets exist mainly in specialized roles, cargo operations, military applications, and niche charter services. The COVID-19 pandemic accelerated the retirement of remaining trijets. Airlines used the crisis as an opportunity to streamline their fleets around more efficient aircraft types. Some trijets found second lives as freighters, where their large cargo capacity still provides value despite higher operating costs. But even in cargo service, they're being replaced by converted twin-engine aircraft that offer better economics. The era of the passenger trijet has effectively ended, closing a fascinating chapter in aviation history. The rise and fall of trijets teaches us something profound about technology and innovation. Sometimes, the most elegant engineering solutions are temporary answers to specific problems, not permanent features of progress. Trijet succeeded because they exploited a unique regulatory and technological window. They provided the range airlines needed when twins couldn't and the efficiency that four-engine aircraft couldn't match. But as that window closed, their fundamental disadvantages became impossible to overcome. The same pattern repeats throughout aviation history. Technologies that seem essential can become obsolete surprisingly quickly when underlying conditions change. So the next time you look up and see a twin-engine jet crossing the sky, remember the three-engine giants that came before. They represent not just forgotten aircraft, but a reminder that in technology, as in life, change is the only constant. What do you think? Was the disappearance of trijets inevitable, or could they have adapted to survive? Let me know in the comments below.